Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. This is our weekly rundown of events, updates and beautiful stuff happening within the Blender community, Blender Foundation and also Blender as an app. And this week we do have a lot of things that you guys will definitely want to take a look at. Starting off, Adobe has now joined the Blender Development Fund. So if you go over to Blender.org, this is the first news you get to see. It has come up with a couple of controversies. Lots of people are saying Blender is going to be bought by them. But that is not true. That is actually something that will never happen. You might want to take a look at what the folks at Blender and also Adobe are talking about Blender Foundation and, and why they choose to join the development fund. And it's also worth knowing that the development fund that they joined, the category is the corporate gold. And this is where we get to find some key players like Ubisoft, Microsoft, Intel Software, Embark, Tangent Lab, and also Blender Market. They also created two new add-ons. So the very first one is a Substance 3D add-on for those who like to bring in their Substance files and probably you will want to bring in your SBSAR files and automatically use them directly in Blender. This is a huge possibility right now as you also have a truckload of free substance materials that you can always play with. Something else which you can also do right now is with a brand new plugin for Mixamo that automatically creates an auto control rig for your 3D model and in most cases these models are basically models that you've already automatically rigged in Mixamo. And speaking about things that are going to be useful for production, folks at Blender Cloud have actually released a very cool blog that deals with the Blender Studio pipeline. A huge shout out to Francesco for doing this one as it is very very informative. The summary of this blog is how you can track your production. This actually goes way back to 2012 when they started the project Tears of Steel. Within this period they did develop a very simple PHP script known as Attract and it was used to track what was happening, review certain things and also assign roles and also know what the status of different things were. Now, Attract also grew up to become a very cool tool that at the point was given out as software as a service and this is something that they really really tried to integrate into Blender. Over time this tool grew and at this point there is also a fresh start they are looking at beginning and this deals with a production tracking software known as Kitsu. Kitsu is a free and open source production tracking software which is by far going to be more integrated into Blender than what Attract kind of looked like. Now there is also a very cool developer that has done something very similar to this and is known as Nagato and I'm also going to put a link in the description just in case you would like to check out Nagato. You can actually use this to track your production in and out of Blender. If you take a look at the next block, there's an add-on that is currently available for Blender which makes it even more easy for you to track your shots and actually know where things are. So there is a very nice thing going on with this one and for those who would like to take a look at this, probably you're into making a movie, you're shooting a small animation animation piece or you're working as a team and you would like to track your shot, you would like to make changes, confirm status and also fix things from Blender and link this up with Kitsu, you may want to consider checking this one out. Meanwhile, if you're also thinking about the sequence editor tools, the Kitsu also works with the sequence editor tool and you can send metadata strips from here over to Kitsu. So it's also worth knowing that Kitsu doesn't come cheap as if you go all the way to what we have here which is uh, the cgwire.com forward slash Kitsu you will notice that we have some stuff going on. So you may actually need to book a demo to actually work with this but for sure if you're looking for the add-on, the add-on is completely free so you can actually go through and grab it. And while we talk about things that you might want to check out, there is also the new production lesson on impact shot. This is a small sort of blog for those who are looking at something to read, something cool, something informative. You may want to consider taking a look at this. So with this said, let's go ahead and talk about some cool things that probably will be coming to Blender 3.0. So the very first one this week is Pablo has been teasing the array brush. Now the array brush is a new cool tool that can easily extract and copy geometry from an active object and it is intended for pattern creation and also shape sketching. Now he has done a couple of demos about this on Twitter and he has also released a brand new demo that shows the array brush support for non-destructive editing. So the beautiful thing about this one is the array brush can edit different parts of your object, deform them individually and at any point in time you would like to tweak these things you can also proceed to tweak them. Now these tweaks can also happen and all of these changes can also happen even after 
that you've remeshed all the copies all together. And with that said, there's also a brand new conversation about the asset browser and this deals with a sort of like a workshop, a small gathering where these things were talked about. So certain things that were talked about included the asset browser itself, the things that were good to have in terms of features for the asset browser, the asset bundle, which I'm quite excited about, the monkey blender 101 and also the work organization. So if you want to take a look at this one, you might want to also come through and check out some of the things that might probably be making their way to the asset browser and there is also some conversations going down here that deals with duplicates id cleanup maybe that's also going to be something that might be coming so that once you make multiple copies the asset browser can actually know that you've already created something like this so you don't have to have multiple copies or duplicates within your assets something else which also makes sense that i would like to know how this one would work is the asset bundle so there is no one currently overseeing this at this moment and uh, they are actually looking at someone that would oversee it i'm also thinking that since asset bundles may be shipping with blender 3.0 I would also want to know if these assets are going to be created by the community or if there's going to be like a streamlined type of asset types that will be needed or if the folks at Blender Foundation will be creating these assets that will be shipped. Right now this is currently unknown. The only thing that we get to know here is that the idea has been out there and the idea is to get users something fun to play with and the 3.0 bundle can happen separately from the development of the asset browser. And meanwhile, if you're also looking at very cool stuff that might be coming over to Blender, there is also a rendering meeting that was just finished about five days ago. And these dealt with a couple of updates that might be coming over to Cycles X, EV and the viewport, and also some very practical infos that you might consider checking. So these are some very nice things that you might want to read up. All of these things would give you a very good idea of what to expect from Cycles X, especially if you're using Windows and Linux. And on the other hand, and you might also want to read up on what the folks at AMD are thinking about and how they would like to approach certain things that deals with Cycles X. And for those who are also into working with EV, you might want to also see that Jerem is continually working on Vulkan support for EV, and that is definitely going to be a cool update to EV once it's here. And while we talk about updates, there's a multi thread auto smooth sharp edge calculation update to the edit mesh. And the world modifier as well has a very cool update option that deals with loose edges. And with that said, let's talk about some community community stuff that you guys would benefit from. The very first one which we're going to talk about is Design Magic. Design Magic is a brand new add-on that you can actually get right now on Blender Market. And a huge shout out to Chip Walters for making this one possible. And Design Magic is more like a tool that can accelerate and help you create hard surface stuff way way faster. So at the core of Design Magic is a collection of over 200 smart design KitOps inserts which you can simply drag and drop and get working with. Now this works with the KitOps 2 Pro and it takes advantage of all of the new snapping features while giving you fast and immediate results. And you might also want to take a look at Sophie that has just released a brand new pack of grease pencil brushes and texture packs and this is a huge one so if you're into working with grease pencil she does have a couple of packs that you might want to check out so this is a very huge one for those that are into grease pencil you might notice that this is a one for watercolor we also have this one for traditional inking and we also have these there's these other ones as well you might want to come through and check out some of these that she has that are for free which you can proceed to download and while we talk about things that you might want to download we did talk about renderman 24 available for blender and renderman did have a couple of bugs at the time of release but there is currently a hotfix that is available and these have solved lots of the problems that windows users and uh, general render man users we're facing. So things like multiple textures not being available on a single model has been sorted out. There's also a couple of things like lights failing has been sorted out, audio UI displays and stuff. Most of those have been sorted out. So just in case you're having issues working with render man 24 and probably you have bug issues like this, you may consider checking this one out and updating it with the hotfix. And with that, there is also a brand new city road builder. This is also a brand new add-on that is currently available on blender market so just in case you're looking for a city road builder that can give you some very cool things like different kinds of road maybe you like to add some street lights and you would like to you know play with the street lights you want to play with how the sidewalks look like this add-on is right here and you can also consider checking this one out the folks at true vfx have also released an update to true terrain and this is version 4.1 so if you're into this or probably you already own a copy of this right now is a good time to come through and update it 
and get good with it. And that's about it. For all of the things I've talked about, link to this is going to be in the description. So do well to check it out. Tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section. And of course, if you like this video or you learned something from this, you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And if you're new here, it's going to be amazing for you to hit the subscribe button and also turn on notifications so that you don't miss next video or the next update. And I'll see you guys again with a tutorial update, free Friday, tutorial Tuesday, tips and tricks, things like this. Peace.